Their long journey to Atlantic City began in the amateurs. Mike Tyson faced Henry Tillman in the United States box offs for the chance to compete in the 1984 Olympic Games. I saw Tyson lose two fights as an amateur. He made a whole, a whole lot of mistakes as an amateur. Mike Tyson lost the decision and with it his Olympic dreams. Meanwhile, a celebrated super heavyweight, Tyrell Biggs, looked on. And in the summer of 84, it was Biggs who captured a gold medal. I think Tyrell Biggs was a brilliant amateur fighter. He made the country proud and captured a gold medal for us. But even in victory, the gold medal quickly lost some of its luster. When they turned pro, Biggs' career took a backward step, and Tyson's stock rose sharply. He was fighting nobody. He was fighting bombs. I didn't think much of him then because uh, the caliber of opponents that he was fighting. That was Tyrell's impression, but as the opponents grew in stature, Tyson looked unstoppable. There was an uppercut. What a shot. Tyson became the hottest commodity in boxing on his way to the heavyweight title, while Biggs' pro career got off to a shaky start. Well, as the early professional, Tyrell Biggs had problems adapting to the professional style, but as time went on, he, he developed into a very fine professional fighter. Today, they are the champion of the challenger. Tyson and Biggs meet head on. Trevor Burbick, we should point out, has been down twice. There's another big shot by Tyson. Burbick in a heap of trouble. Down he goes. some point in time, whether it be in amateurs or in professionals, that I was going to eventually meet up with Mike Tyson. Well, today, Tyrell Bills is a very skillful fighter, and I look forward to matching my skills against his. Tonight, the journey ends in Atlantic City as the Trump Plaza plays host to the undisputed heavyweight championship. It was back in the roaring 20s when New Jersey first hosted a heavyweight championship fight. The legendary Jack Dempsey met Frenchman Georges Carpentier on July 2nd, 1921. A 100,000 seat stadium was built in Jersey City as Dempsey knocked out Carpentier in four to retain his title, earning boxing's first million dollar gate. Back then, people flocked to a popular resort community in the southern part of the state. And some 66 years later, we're live in the convention center at Atlantic City, New Jersey, where undisputed heavyweight champion Mike Tyson defends his IBF, WBA, and WBC titles against the number one contender, Tyrell Biggs. We're scheduled for 15 rounds. A capacity crowd of 12,000 fans has made its way into this indoor facility on the boardwalk. Now, for the first time, a sense of doubt for a Mike Tyson title fight. The once indestructible and immovable force has been turned beatable by boxing experts and by the general public. That is what has sold out this arena, and that is why there's such an air of anticipation in the convention center tonight. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. Welcome to Atlantic City. You know, it was just about 13 months ago that Tyrell Biggs fought an overweight 254-pound punching bag named Purcell Davis. He won a decision, but the press at that time said if they were to match Biggs with Tyson right then, it would be a gross mismatch. Now, here we are just over a year later, and everybody is saying, experts whose opinions, I have to admit, I value very much, are saying that when this fight is over, the hand of a new champion will be raised, and that hand will belong to Tyrell Biggs. Well, with us as always, the champ, Sugar Ray Leonard. And Ray, the thing that strikes me is for Tyrell Biggs' last five fights, there's been some criticism about him. He hasn't got it. He did this wrong. He did that wrong. He did the other thing wrong. And yet, people like Michael Katz, people like Larry Merchant, people, as I said, whose opinions I respect, are giving him a legitimate chance tonight against Tyson. What about Ray Leonard? Well, I personally feel that uh, Tyra Biggs possessed the tools, the physical tools, to be effective against a fighter like Mike Tyson. And the reason I say this is because in against David Bay, he showed the counter combinations that 
is very effective against a guy who comes in with a crouching style, the uppercut and the right hand. So Biggs has to concentrate each and every round. I think that's a given that movement is what, if anything, can beat Mike Tyson. But you also have to be able to punch once you do get him out of position. And I guess the question I have to ask is, can Tyrell Biggs punch? Well, he doesn't have to necessarily have to punch hard. The fact of the matter is he has to keep him off balance, break his rhythm with the left jab, and give them angles, give them lateral movement. We know there's kind of a hackneyed ideology that numbers don't lie. The taller man and the bigger man is almost always going to beat the smaller man and the shorter man. That's usually the case, unless the smaller, shorter man's name is Mike. Mike Tyson. Most competition is governed by feet and inches. From goal line to baseline, from foul line to finish line, the outcome is often the result of these boundaries. But in some sports, the measurements of the human body are thought to be of greater value, such as in boxing, where every portion of the fighter's anatomy is recorded and critiqued. For Mike Tyson, the most scrutinized measurement of all is his height. Is he really 5'11 and a half as reported, or is he shorter? For the press, it's become a very popular question. I'm tall enough to be heavyweight champ of the world. At least 10 times a day, let alone the press asking me how tall I am, people in general saying, you're not as big as I thought you was. The guy is your size doing all that damage. I always thought you were bigger. How big is big? But if the average male height is five foot nine inches and the average heavyweight champion is six foot one and three quarters inches, then how tall is Mike Tyson? As reported and often contested, Mike Tyson is exactly five feet 11 and one half inches. History has proven that short heavyweights do make legitimate champions. At five foot seven inches, Tommy Burns is the shortest boxer to ever wear the heavyweight crown. A former middleweight champ, the 175-pound Burns successfully defended his heavyweight title 11 times before losing to Jack Johnson. Standing 5'10 and a quarter, Rocky Marciano is heavyweight boxing's most remembered short champion. But short only in stature, for in the ring, heart and determination overshadowed height, or lack of it. Like Tyson, Joe Frazier also measured 5'11 and a half. Known for his left hook and devastating body punches, Height was of no object when this heavyweight connected. Tyson's opponents have averaged six two and a half, and only two have stood less than six feet. In boxing, it is often said that the taller fighter has a height advantage, but in the Tyson camp, these fighters have a marked disadvantage. I think you know it's to my advantage because most fighters are used to fighting opponents six three, six two, the average um, heavyweight. And I feel that I use it to my advantage because I move my head, I'm very quick, and I'm low to the ground, and it's very difficult to hit me. I crouch low just to make my opponents punch down because I know where they're going to punch at because I'm, I'm down there and I'm looking at them because I'm so low, and I come up, I feel it's to my advantage because they can't see most of my punches coming. I get a lot of leverage from my punches, and it doesn't matter if I punch up or straight or down or around. I have good leverage. His lower body strength provides the leverage necessary to throw powerful punches in an upward movement against taller fighters, as depicted here against the six foot five inch Jose Ribalta. Is it then feasible that the taller opponent is at a disadvantage since there's probably less leverage gain when punching downward at the shorter Tyson? Perhaps another misconstrued measurement is the reach philosophy. The longer the reach, the greater the advantage. It's logical to assume that a longer reach increases a fighter's chances of landing more jabs. But once again, the Tyson camp disagrees. Jabbing is, doesn't have anything to do with the length of your arms or anything. Jabbing is all to do with timing. If you throw your jab at the right time, you could be 5'6", and I'll jab a guy 6'4". This was evident in his last fight against Tony Tucker when Tyson gave up five and a half inches in height and ten and a half inches in reach. Still, he connected with more jabs. I like the fact that I, I'm unique as being one of the shortest heavyweights in the history and having the second shortage reach in history, and still I'm tremendously successful. Perhaps 
Perhaps one day a method will exist to calculate a fighter's heart and skill, a day when the advantage or disadvantage will have nothing to do with measures of height or reach. On that day, we may then discover that the sport of boxing is not just a matter of inches. And if I could come back as a guy 6'3", 6'4", I would never want to change. When I was young, I used to always say, God, I'm just, I'm just a midget. I'm never going to grow. I'm never going to be anything because I'm too short to do any kind of sports, anything. But then, you know I mean? I started believing in myself and things worked out right. So according to Mike Tyson, sometimes the numbers do lie, but take a look at these numbers. The opponents that Mike Tyson has fought who are over six feet, four inches tall as Biggs is tonight. Tillis, it was six one. A decision in 10 rounds. Four of the five names that you see, Tucker Smith, Rivalta Green and Tillis, went the route with Mike Tyson. And tonight, Mike Tyson at 5'11 and a half, that's legitimate, 6'4 and 3 quarters, Tyrell Biggs. The reach, Mike Tyson says, it won't make any difference. Challengers, you know, have just not fared very well in this bastion of Miss Americas and bus tours. George Carpentier came and went back in 1921, and Scott Frank was sent packing by Larry Holmes in 1983. Well, tonight, Tyrell Biggs tries to turn a gold medal into green pastures as he takes on Mike Tyson for the undisputed heavyweight championship. With more on the interesting aspects of this fight, here's Larry Merchant. Good evening. And since what we all want is a good evening, a good fight, I guess I find myself wondering now whether that's part of the reason why so many knowledgeable boxing people and me are making a case for Tyrell Biggs. How much wishful thinking is involved? The case is this. We all know that Mike Tyson is a young whirlwind, but flawed. And we all know that a real disciplined, poised, skilled boxer often can neutralize a whirlwind, a brawler, a brawler. So if Tyrell Biggs fights his best fight, his most brilliant fight, his bravest fight, well, who knows? Another reason why the case is being made is that it probably can't be made for any other heavyweight out there. But the case itself has a flaw. The flaw is that Tyrell Biggs has never shown the authority of a champion, the ability to rule that square of truth out there, the ability to dominate, to impose his will on opponents. He has never fought the perfect fight with his theoretically perfect boxing skills. What he has done, impressively, is fight under duress. And if there's one thing we do know tonight, he will be under duress again. Even when Tyrell Biggs was up, winning a gold medal at the Olympics in Los Angeles, he was being put down. Put down for his pure amateur style in what was, after all, the biggest amateur tournament in the world. It turned out later that Biggs was in the process of getting higher still for a bigger fall. He was drinking and drugging, recreationally, but it was a poor tent. But when he turned pro, Biggs' crowd-displeasing style became a serious problem. He was booed in his professional debut at Madison Square Garden. Much more serious, however, was his growing drug habit at $1,500 a day. He nearly fell all the way then, until finally he checked himself into a drug clinic. Some people were in there with slit wrists where they actually tried to take their own life. And uh, I said, well, I never tried anything like that. When psychologically and mentally, that's what I was, you know, that's what I was doing anyway. I was killing myself just, as, if not worse, than somebody slitting their wrist. And this is, these are the things that I came in touch with. And that's when I made my mind, I said, well, I, you know, I can use this. This can, this is what's going to get me back in order. If I can take this, take these tools that they give you and use them the proper way I can clean myself up. And uh, doing that is a miracle. Ready? His infant son and his girlfriend, the child's mother, provided a human dimension to Big's determination to win his toughest fight. You know, it was kind of an ugly situation, but it was nothing where he was endangered or anything like that. It was just my, my thinking and staying away and 
you know, not having them involved in that part of my life. Linda, she's been there. She saw things that nobody will probably even know about. For her to hang in there is, is amazing. And as far as Terrell is concerned, I mean, he's, you know, he gives me energy. He's what I live for, you know. He looks up to me um, to feel that love from him, and he depends on me. And, you know, I want to be there for him. I, and I don't, you know, I didn't want to, I don't want to be a failure. What was thought to be the turnaround in and out of the ring was dramatized in his ninth pro fight when his right collarbone was broken by Jeff Sims, a dangerous journeyman. Biggs responded, though in pain, by dominating the rest of the fight with one hand, his left. But his detractors returned in full voice after his unimpressive victory over Quick Tillis. And when he decked Ronaldo Snipes but couldn't finish him, that was another mark against him. And his own handlers were suspicious of a drug relapse after a car accident, but he was clean. Then a flat-footed big slugged it out with David Bay and suffered a terrible eye cut that nearly lost the fight and cost him a shot at Mike Tyson. But as with his other problems and setbacks, Biggs rallied. He stopped Bay dramatically just seconds before the referee was prepared to stop the fight. If it hasn't been one thing, it's been two or three for Terrell Biggs. Cynics believe Biggs' managers took the Tyson fight prematurely with only 15 pro fights, none against a top contender, before something else happened to him. They claim that Big's record of overcoming adversity will carry over to Tyson, that his strength of body is now matched by his strength of character and maturity. I believe that what I've been through, and as good as I am, I know that I, I know how good I am. And for me to have been criticized and the whole shot, I mean, you know, I owe it to myself to go out there and beat Michael Tyson like I am his dad. It's, he's made for me. Ty son. I, I owe it to myself to go out there and beat this fella and be called the new undisputed heavyweight champion in the world. Well, tonight is when Tyro Biggs gets a chance to turn those words into actions. And he, of course, will be the first man out of his locker room and into the ring. And this crowd, I tell you, is really alive here. Muhammad Ali has just been introduced, and Ali is out there, Ray, leading cheers. Vintage Muhammad Ali. That's all reminiscent for Muhammad Ali. He was a great, great champion. And, of course, what a lot of people are hoping is that uh, Tyrell Biggs can emulate Muhammad Ali in being able to defuse the big man. This is the, uh, Ali did it to Liston, he did it to Foreman, he did it to Fraser. Can Tyrell Biggs do that? And the Olympic theme being played, and you saw that graphic a moment ago that seven champions, Olympic gold medalists, have gone on to be heavyweight champions. Of course, four of those seven did not win Olympic heavyweight titles. Muhammad Ali, Floyd Patterson, and both the Spinks brothers. And of course, one thing that Tyrell Biggs is going to have to think about, at least somewhere in the back of his mind, is that serious cut that he suffered against David Bay. And you can see, over the left eye, took 30-some stitches to close that. And there, on the right of your screen, is the scar tissue that was left from that. I'll say this, however. If he gets hit with right hands there, it isn't the cut he's going to have to worry about. <laughs> That's a, that is a valid point. You know, we talked about the fact, and Larry alluded to it, that he has been criticized in several of his most recent fights, and yet people are really giving him a legitimate chance just to kind of go back and tell you a little bit. When he fought Rod Smith, that was the first fight he had after he broke his collarbone against Sims. He said that he was a little bit tentative, and he didn't really use the right hand in that fight. Then he fought Purcell Davis. That's the gentleman that I mentioned at 254 pounds who really offered no resistance, and he said that his bombs were more dud than they were dynamite. Biggs has been trying to make the transition from an amateur to a professional, to being more aggressive. And in so doing, he's been catching punches. So the question is whether he can find out who he, who he is and fight the fight who he is. And that best fight might be fighting as an amateur, sticking and moving floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. 
And he also came in with a jacket reminiscent of my partner here, Sugar Ray Leonard, something new in the sport of boxing. Speaking of Sugar Ray Leonard, we have always tried to give you a little bit of an insight, just things to look for in every fight as we go along on this HBO, particularly through the heavyweight series, and in fact, in every fight. And right now, let's take a look at Ray Leonard's tip of the night. What to look for from each of these men tonight, Ray? Well, there should be a classic confrontation, Barry, with the boxer against the puncher. Well, actually, Tyson is the puncher who be the aggressor, but he must be patient because he has a tendency with his crouching style to be susceptible to the uppercut. Here gets Tony Tucker there, the uppercut land, and that's the punch that Biggs has been working on in the gym. Another mistake that Tyson makes, he tries to load up with one punch. That would not work against a guy like Biggs, who gives you a lot, a lot of angles, good upper body movement. And here against Ronaldo Snipes, the good body movement. And what's this combination here, Barry? On and over, to raise the chin, and then to follow up with a clean right hand. I've been very impressed with this particular combination, a beautiful combination thrown by uh, Biggs. Biggs can't afford to stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Here against David Bay, he was prone to be hit with combinations and also prone to cuts. That right hand by David Bay cut him, so he must give lateral positions and angles to be effective against Mike Tyson. Two things, though, that he didn't do, and just to go back to those little snatches that you saw against Ronaldo Snipes, as you saw, he had him down to the fourth round, but he didn't follow up. Snipes was done, and Biggs couldn't put him away. And then against David Bay, he hit him consistently, but until he was cut, he really didn't go after David Bay. For both fighters, it's not, I don't think it's gonna be necessarily one punch, although Tyson is an exception, but it's gonna be combinations to be effective. And I go back to the old thing of, can you make Pete Rose into Babe Ruth? Can you make this guy into a banger? It depends on the size of the bet. <laughs> <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of that, uh, the odds uh, in my last call to Las Vegas turned out to be about seven and a half to one in favor of Tyson, down from around 11 to one earlier in the week. Tyson is a slight favorite to stop the fight, end it before the end of the sixth round. And a little bit of a waiting game going on now, and it's really quieted the crowd, too. The crowd was right into this fight, right from the very beginning. It is a capacity crowd of about 12,000. You can see many of them, everybody on their feet here. Right now, it's kind of a waiting game, and that is Mike Tyson making, making Tyrell Biggs wait, and both fighters making the crowd wait, and they're starting to get the first glimpse now of Mike Tyson, and Tyson, we understand, is going to run into the ring. And here comes Mike Tyson now, and as usual, he is all business, draped in the three belts that he now owns. Well, as, as Mills Lane, the, the referee from Nevada says, Mike Tyson surely looks like he's saying, let's get it on. He was telling us the other day that there's an expression on the streets where he was raised that say, you gotta bring it to get it. And that's exactly his philosophy. It means that you can't win at the tables with your hands in your pockets. And you can't win in here unless you take some shots, take some risks. You know, he quotes Joe Frazier, actually, as he comes into the ring when people criticize his height, that he's too small. And he says Frazier believed he was big enough to get the job done. And that's all that counts. Mike Tyson, of course, 31-0, 27 knockouts. Until he won the title, actually, he hadn't fought any, anybody more impressive than Biggs has fought to this point. Since that time, Tyson has fought a better class of fighter than Biggs has. And the crowd, again, still very much into this. Five years difference, Mike Tyson is younger than Biggs, even though he's had 31 fights to Biggs 15. Yeah, Barry, and uh, Tyson, interestingly, came in a few pounds less than he has recently. Obviously, he wants to be able to keep up with the guy who's the boxer. And Biggs came in bulked up by a few pounds. Obviously, he wants to be strong for Tyson. What it means is they're both ready. And here is our punch stat, our statistical profile of the fighters. Tyson's last fight against Tucker, you see how many punches he threw. He throws fewer punches than Biggs, uh, but of course he throws more meaningful ones. Against Tillis, uh, Tyson's most difficult fight before he became champion, he threw a few fewer punches than Biggs did and landed fewer, but Tyson is a lot different fighter now than he was then. 
and in the jabs, as you might suspect. Biggs throws more of them than Tyson, but Tyson showed in his last fight against Tucker that he can use the jab effectively. And the rules tonight will come under the IBF jurisdiction. They will rotate that, incidentally, in a case where there is an undisputed champion. Ten-point must system, three judges score the fight. There will not be a standing eight count. No surprises here. The fighter can be saved by the bell only in the last round, and the three-knockdown rule has been waived. Right now, we'll go up to the ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the pre-fight introductions. Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Before we get started, recently a great friend of boxing passed away. At this time, in a tribute to one of sports and boxing's finest journalists, would everyone please rise for silence as timekeeper Roosevelt Gilbert tolls the final count of ten for the late Dick Young. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the featured bout of the evening. It's a presentation of Don King Productions and the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino, along with Budweiser. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board Commissioner Larry Hazard, Deputy Commissioners Nick D. Balistrieri and Lawrence Wallace. The chairman is Jerry Gormley. Representing the International Boxing Federation is its president, Robert W. Lee. The championship committee chairman is here, Bill Brennan. Representing the World Boxing Association, Dr. Keith Arthur and Dr. Elias Cordova. Here for the World Boxing Council is James J. Binns, Esquire. The three judges doing all the scoring tonight are Al Walensky, John Stewart, and Frank D. Brunette. The timekeeper, Roosevelt Gilbert. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Rudy Battle. Chief ringside physician, Dr. Frank B. Doggett. Also in attendance, Dr. Stanley Eden and Dr. Paul Williams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble from the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino by way of Convention Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. 15 rounds for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. The referee for this bout is Tony Orlando. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the white trunks and weighs 228 and three quarter pounds. He's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This Olympic gold medal champion has 15 consecutive victories, 10 by knockout. Introducing the number one challenger in the world, Tyrell B. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks. He weighs 216 pounds. From Catskill, New York, 27 of his 31 unblemished victories are by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated, undisputed, heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Gentlemen, you received your instructions prior to coming to the ring. Therefore, I expect a good, clean bout. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves, we're back to your corner. Good luck. Barry and Ray, I wouldn't be surprised if this fight lasted a minute or an hour. I feel exactly <laughs> the same way. It's one of those fights you really don't know. I, I believe in the opinions of many of the people who feel that Tyrell Biggs can win the fight. I don't happen to be of that school, but you just don't know. Expect Tyson to jump right on Tyrell Biggs. Three questions that Mike Tyson really has to answer. Can he cope with a clever boxer? Can he survive a heavy puncher? And can he persevere when he's hurt? You notice right from the start, Tyson is applying the pressure. 
trying to slow his man down. I'm seeing more jabs from Mike Tyson than I've seen in the past. I see a lot of movement on the part of uh, Tyrell Biggs. Good lateral movement. Those hands should be up a little higher because, again, the hand speed of Mike Tyson is very good. You have said that Biggs has to go side to side to win the fight, right? Go side to side. Give your man angles. Throw the jab like he's doing now, not to let Tyson set up. Now, Tyson also said that he has found a pattern in Tyrell Biggs that he feints to the right before the punch actually is thrown. Well, whatever he does, the fact that Tyson has to set up to get that kind of leverage. See, a good snapping jab is very effective. Whether or not Biggs can keep this up is yet to be seen. It's not time to be pretty in here. It's just time to frustrate this man. And that's what they want from, from uh, Biggs. Good, consistent jab. And along the lines of patterns, Biggs feels that Tyson actually bobs in a pattern four times, and then he comes up with his head. See, wait, now here, you saw how Tyson oh, walks that? in with that crouching style to deliver a shot. He's trying for the head. Now we're seeing head, head hunting from Mike Tyson. He can't get into that. That was a good shot by Tyson. Get off the ropes, tie your man up. That's the way. Get him back into the center of the ring. Use the jab again. And come with that right hand. That was a quick little overhand right by Tyrell He's Biggs. Talking. Biggs now is talking to Tyson. Again, Barry's trying to frustrate him. But I don't like his hands down that low. I don't like Biggs' hands down so low. Because Tyson throws those looping right hands and left hooks. Keep him up, Mike. Keep him up. Body shot by Tyson. Teofilo Stevenson, and I admit it was five years ago, but he really bothered There is the hook. Again, because his hands are down. He's moving right, but he keeps his hands down too low. Tyson has very quick hands for a big man. Stevenson beat Biggs by going to the body. Broke three ribs, as a matter of fact. A lot of water under the bridge since then. They're going to have to fix Tyson's equipment here in just a moment as it has come loose. Biggs is starting to become a stationary target, which is wrong. Right hand by Tyson. A little bit of blood inside the mouth of Tyrell Biggs. I don't know if Biggs can fight a perfect fight, but he fought about as perfect a round as he could have hoped for to start this fight. There you see our punch stat, which tells you that Tyson's was not effective with the jab, and of course, Tyrell Biggs was very effective with it. Then stop. And as Punchstat showed or confirmed, that was a very good round using the left hand as well as he can. That is exactly what Biggs must do to stay in this fight. Can Tyson neutralize the jab? You see, Biggs is doing great the first two minutes of the first round, keeping that jab consistent, moving lateral, giving angles, but then he, the last maybe 45 seconds of the round, Barry, he stopped. He came stationary target. The hands again, which I think is a, a, a major mistake because of Tyson's hand speed. And Tyson throws his punch. He loops his right hand. He loops his hook. And uh, Biggs could be asked for a few problems. And the thing that strikes me, actually, is Biggs did have a round and did fight according to his fight plan, but he still took some strong shots from Tyson. You see, now Biggs again, Barry, is starting to stand there and exchange toe-to-toe, -to -toe, like I said earlier. You can't do that. Tyson's punches come so fast with so much velocity behind him. It's devastating. Biggs has shown a tendency actually throughout his career, and especially later in his career, most recently, 
to get in there occasionally and want to slug it out when he's been stung. And that could be suicide. And the way that Biggs is moving to his right, that's wrong because of the hook of Mike Tyson. He'll run right to the left hook. Two hands, two hands, punch out. Let him go, let him go. Let him go, let him go, come on. What I was Step expecting back. from Biggs, and in fact, they, they oh, told oh, me this, wait. that he's been prepared, working this in the gym, the was the uppercut, the jab to go through go. Tyson's defense. I have not seen that yet. And the game plan was for give, Biggs, rather, to move to his left. Now, he's been moving to his right, and as you said, he's been getting himself in a little trouble when he does so. Tyson is gripping some tremendous shots to the body, and uh, that's going to help bring those hands down even lower. Remember, Stevenson broke three ribs of Tyrell Biggs. I'm looking for a left hook, Barry. I really am, because of, look at the right hand of uh, Tyrell Biggs. That's the uppercut, but you gotta come back with the right hand. The uppercut raises the chin of a guy who crouches in, and the right hand does the most damage. There was a big right hand, best punch of the fight. That was the left hook, Barry. That was the left hook I was talking about. Now, if Big should make it back to his corner, I'm sure Georgie Bennett will say, keep those hands high. Right, left, I'll get it right. <laughs> right, left, left. <laughs> But the fact of the matter is, the right hand is down a big, the left hook has been scoring. And it rocked Biggs. As Michael Tyson said before this fight, everybody has a plan until they're hit. Take a little spring back and put a little twist in there. Take a little sip. And here is Tyson's most effective punch. Biggs has been on his uh, flat footed more in this round than he was in the first round. Got nailed with the left hook. He has shown in the past that he takes a good punch. You don't want to take too many from Tyson. But now look, this guy will slow down. And I just, what are the stars for another round? You understand? Come on, Fox and you. So Kevin Rooney wants Mike Tyson to jab a little bit more. And Big starts the third round backing up a little bit. Good stiff jab by Mike Tyson. Tyson will constantly apply pressure to Biggs. Keep working his body and working a jab like Kevin Rooney stated. People don't realize this, and I learned this from Andrew Dundee. It's not a matter how long your jab is, the fact that if you have a jab, use it. That offsets someone else's jab. And the left hook. The hook's going to land all night, Barry, because his right hand is down. Let me show you what Tyson does when he delivers that left hook. He takes one, two steps in, dips, and, and puts his whole body, all his weight behind the punch. A lot of leverage. One, two. You see it. Steps in. So you have to time it. You have to time his movement. One, two. Again, same thing. One, two. And he throws it. That was a little short left hand that did get in. Body shot with a left hand. I break. And, this and is now the cut over the left eye, and it's pretty bad. It's the same eye, the same cut. And another big left hand, and Biggs is hurt. Now he gets out of there. A lot of blood from the left eye of Tyrell Biggs. That's the same thing, thing probably happened with uh, hold it, hold it, hold it. David Bates. They're in a toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's a terrible mistake. Something he pointed out before the fight. And now it's Tyson just hammering him. That's a nasty cut. It's, it's, the blood is seeping to the eye. It's going to require a lot of work in the corner of Tyrell Biggs to stop that bleeding. The 
cut is right above the eye. It's exactly in the same place as the last one. Great! Step back, step back. Let me go, Mike. Let me go, I don't know what happened. All that gym work has gone down the drain because he's not boxing, he's not using his tools. He's trying to outmuscle Mike Tyson, which is not his fight plan. And there is a huge left hand. Great, no punch you, let me go, let me go. They may stop it, that's a nasty cut. And I don't think One. I can tell you what a finisher Mike Tyson is. Pressure, the relentless pressure of Tyson Relax. takes its toll. That's a big round. Hold us there, hold us there. Hold us there. Hold us there. Hold us there. you see that cut against Ty and that he absorbed against Tyrell, against David Bay, and here it is right now being worked on. That was a 32-stitch gash that he suffered from Bay. Now let's see if we can catch it as it happens. That's the punch that apparently sliced Bay open. Excuse me, Tyrell Biggs open. It's the same right hand, Larry, that was thrown by David Bay. Let's remember that Biggs has fought his best when he's been in trouble. But I think it's fair to say that he's not in there against David Bay tonight. Right hand body shot and the left hand behind it by Tyson. Mike Tyson is not just loaded up with one punch. He's trying to put his punches together. He's trying to put together combinations. A mistake he made with Tony Tucker. Tyson Ray, to me, seems to be a little bit more patient tonight. Yes, he, in fact, he is a little more composed, uh, picking his shots. But again, I don't, know, I don't know why they don't pick it up in Big's corner, the way Tyson steps in and leaves his chin so vulnerable. The way I see it now, Mike Tyson has made Biggs fight his fight. So far, the cut has not been any worse. And remember, it was a pretty good job done by Ace Parada, his cut man, in the fight with David Bay. But again, Tyson just putting all the pressure on, so, having it his way. Didn't seem like Mike was a good short uppercut by uh, Mike Tyson. A little more by the movement from uh, Tyrell Biggs now. Start throwing some uppercuts. He took a big left hand there. And another. The cut is reopened again. Right. Step back. One go, one go. Step back, please. Step back. All right, break. Step back. No punch in No punch in Step back. Watch your head, Mike. Watch your head, okay? How does it happen, Ray, that a fighter like Biggs, in this case tonight, will go into a fight with a game plan, and almost from the opening bell, he'll just let that game plan go away? It's all concentration. you got to stick to something that's working for you. And what I see in Tyson, Tyson stick to his game plan. He works the body with that right hand. He drills a hard right hand to the body and comes up with a good left hook. But Biggs is doing almost everything exactly the opposite of what he said he was going to do. Huge left hand there by Tyson. And a combination by Tyson, a left and a right behind him. I break. Step back. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Getting to be a mismatch. Right now, Tyson looks like he's rolling in like the tide from the Atlantic Ocean a few steps from Convention Hall. Oh, 
<laughs> had a good doc. I don't worry. We're going to be all right. No problem. Give me that bottle. Bob, oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, the problem. Green doctor is taking Come a on, lot of stuff. I got it all set. But the cut appears no worse than it did Put your earlier. head back. Look back. All the way back. You're a bit desperate. And you're, you're laying back. You're taking it easy. You can't take it easy with this guy. You got to keep the pressure on this guy. You got to move your hand. All you got to do is throw the combination. You got to put two, three, four punches together. You understand me? You understand what I'm saying? He won't be there if he's still in with something. He's not going to be there. One more round. Let's go. And you will not go. You're not nothing. One more round. He's not there, baby. Come on, second down. And so we start the fifth round, and Tyson is right on his man. Kevin Rooney exhorting him to throw two and three punch combinations. Swelling under the right eye of Tyrell Biggs as well right now. I don't know if Tyrell's going to recognize himself when he wakes up tomorrow morning. I don't know what that was a second ago by Tyrell Biggs. This is somewhat disappointing for Big's corner because he has more talent than what he's showing tonight. The left hooks has been consistent and very, very accurate with Mike Tyson. But they're there for a good reason, right? Well, Tyson, because uh, look what you have in front of you. Uh, the fact that <laughs> Biggs is not doing what he, what he worked on. He just forgot about his game plan, totally abandoned it. Mike Tyson, he's doing what he does best. Worked the body, worked the head. Simple fact is, and I don't think you have to be a boxing expert, Tyrell Biggs is dropping his right hand, and he's just leaving himself completely open for the left hook. Well, I think this is a good education for the public because the fans at home, because they're seeing what should not be done against a fighter like a Mike Tyson, or any boxer, or puncher, rather, in particular. You have to be consistent, keep those hands up. And again, that cut over the left eye has opened up. There is a swelling under the right eye that has a lot of blood right below the surface of the skin also. What Biggs has to do, he has to work something out which is actually the left jab to break that rhythm and stop the momentum of Mike Tyson. He, can, he continues, Barry, to allow Mike to dominate. And again, bleeding from the mouth as he has been since the first round. Not a pretty sight. He subjects him, himself, Biggs does, to standing toe-to-toe -to -toe and being a, actually a punching bag. This way, you will probably see uh, more knots and bruises because Tyson is hard. Good body shot by Mike Tyson. And remember, the doctor was in Tyrell Biggs' corner and looked long and hard at that cut in the last round, and you're going to see him again. Tyson hit on the break that time. I'm telling both of this is a boxing match, man, a wrestling match. And I say break, you both break. Understood? You understand, Mike? Two? Let's go. Five. That cut looks even uglier. I'm Friday, sure the doctor will look at it. Bloody Friday. Doing enough. You're not doing enough. You know what I'm saying? He's doing enough. Now look, don't give in to this shit. This guy can't punch. Can't do nothing out there. Now listen. Uh, All right, but look. Hey. Right, right. No, you gotta play clean, man. Let's start taking. Listen, I'm telling him. And keep your hands up when this guy is. Don't trust the guy. Now look. Keep your head. Uh, Are you all right? Uh, Arrow Letterman, Let's go get this guy. unofficial official. How do you score the fight? Well, Larry, I've got it 49-46. Mike Tyson, four to round, four to one in rounds. Uh, based on the four points that we score, it's very simple to score. Mike Tyson's just been the effective aggressor, the harder hitter, and uh, he's dominating at this point. This guy's dying. Second down. Okay. You understand? Second down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Lou Dubez doing everything possible to inspire 
Biggs, he, he said as he left the ring, you heard him, you heard him. <laughs> that is wishful thinking. And Biggs holding on a great deal now. There was a right hand by Tyson. And another. Biggs, you have to say, he, he, he takes a good shot, but it, uh, this was not necessary. I mean, I, I figured that Biggs would use that height, that reach, and his ring generalship to uh, make this fight a little easier for him. Instead, he abandoned his uh, Mike, tactics, the strategy he worked on in the gym, and select to fight Mike Tyson's fight. I, I love those body shots there. It weakens the fighter, it takes away his legs, so you won't see that much movement from Tyrell Biggs. And what Mike wants him to be is a stationary target. Tyson has fought an excellent fight so far. I, you know, I, I admit that Biggs has let him fight an excellent fight, but Tyson's been very sharp. Well, I like Tyson because now he's putting his combinations together. He's not loading up anymore. And he's also showing a lot more patience. He was a guy who would just get in there and go for the quick kill and try to do it, generally speaking, with one punch. You know what's happening here? Actually, Biggs is just wearing down, slowly but surely, slowly but surely. It's like chopping a tree down. It's the same principle. He's wearing, Mike Tyson's wearing his man down. And the way you can tell this, Burr, is the fact, you notice this very, very uh, seldom does uh, Biggs retaliate. Very seldom you see Biggs come back with a combination of his own. Break, no punch, let him out. Let him out, Tell. Let him go, come on, Tell. Well, I'm going to take a point away now. These two, of course, go back a long way, all the way back to amateur days. Another left hand, and there's a great shot. Biggs is in trouble. Yeah. Right. The way it looks now, uh, Biggs like a defeated warrior now. He's been pounded on for five rounds. Right. Right. And he's slowly but surely wearing down. His legs don't look steady. Tyson's getting stronger. And Biggs is just holding on. Well, that made the betters happy, if nothing else, because Tyrell Biggs has lasted six rounds. They say that Tyson is predictable, but uh, so is a hurricane. What can you do about it? Well, here's something that hasn't been predictable the last couple of weeks because the football strike, but inside the NFL will now be back because the strike has been, and I'll put it in quotes, settled. Your hosts, Len Dawson and Nick Bonacani. It's right here on HBO Thursdays at 11. More sevens, like you're doing. More sevens, more sevens. That six was beautiful. Let's see, six, five, one. Six, five, two, one. Get to the side. Play with this guy now. You understand me? Yes. This guy's got nothing. Give him the faint, like you did before. Give him the faint. Give him a faint. Step to the side. Five. You're taking the best he's got. So what the hell's wrong with you? Five back. Come on, this guy's gone. Now listen Come to Come on, you're better fighting than him. Five from your chin, though. The guy can't fight inside. So if you, if you got no legs, fight him inside if you got Those numbers you heard were a fight combination. Customato, the mentor of Mike Tyson, used to put numbers on the different fight combinations. And uh, Kevin Rooney is Tyson's disciple. I heard something interesting in Big's corner. Is, ben me. told him, his trainer said, if your legs are gone, stand and fight him. Stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and fight him. So apparently the legs of Tyra Biggs are shot because you don't see movement. He hasn't had movement actually for the past two or three rounds. And just to further that point, in the last round, our punch that figures, Tyrell Biggs threw 15 punches, Ray. Again, like I said earlier, Barry, he's, he's just wearing down. You gotta, you can appreciate, especially from ringside, those body attacks by Mike Tyson. I mean, he gets his whole body, a lot of leverage. I am surprised that I have not seen that many uppercuts from Tyrell Biggs. Now that was his game plan. I mean, that was something he said he had to do. 
Incidentally, at least for the last couple of rounds, has not shown any more blood. It appears to me that Biggs was trying to time Tyson with a counter right. I noticed when Tyson comes in, Biggs tried to stand his ground and throw a right hand. So now that tells me that Biggs is pretty much falling to the same trap as Mike Tyson, trying for one punch. And he's never, there's a right hand that just caught Biggs off balance. Biggs is covering up a lot of times unnecessarily and just trying to protect himself. Biggs, of course, has never been known as a guy who could put a man away with one punch. He dropped Snipes with a good right hand. But he didn't put him away. The elbow there from uh, Tyson. Uh, Kevin Roney was telling Tyson, get a, little, a couple head fights. That, punch that was a tremendous left hand. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How do you feel, okay? Oh, this, this is it. He is gone right now. He has no legs at all. And 10 seconds to go in a round. There's a left hand. He's down again. It's over. It's all over. And it wasn't even close. And what we've seen has happened so often in which a fighter after a few rounds starts to hang on to Tyson that we have to say it's Tyson's credit. He's the one who makes it happen. He makes it happen with his pressure. And no matter what an opponent's plan is, that plan disintegrates like a broken piece of crockery when it's faced with that kind of pressure. There's no way to practice for that. I pointed out in the past, it's like Trying to, how do you practice to hit Nolan Ryan's fastball or Boris Becker's serve? Where do you, where do you get the practice for that? You don't. <laughs> it's that simple. Let's take a look at the first knockdown. It was a left hand and a big one, and I feel like I'm being redundant with that. But he hit him with many big left hands, Ray. Well, look at, look at the right hand of uh, Tyrell Biggs. It's down, and the left hook has been landing from round one. But the first, the first minute or two of round one, Biggs is doing his job, boxing. Now he becomes a stationary target. That total -to toe tactics proved wrong against David Bay, which he subsequently was cut. And now the same thing happened. So all we had was actually a replay of what took place. Here, Mike Tyson just wears his man down with beautiful short left hooks. It was really more his legs than anything else. He was just kind of off balance, had his legs together, just never really got it together. Here is the final knockdown now. No, I, I think it's the power and the fact that Mike Tyson actually wore his man down. One more look at the end for Tyrell Biggs. And Barry, let me say this for you and Lark. There is a way to stop a guy coming in, and it's with a jab. You gotta work on jabs, angles, and combinations. Yeah, and Ray, he did it for one round. That was it. But that was his fault, Barry. He forgot. He just gave up. We just abandoned the tactics that would have been effective. Oh, that's what I mean. As a matter of fact, and, and I don't mean to just blow smoke at you because you did it, but you were the only person I've ever seen start with a fight plan and stay with a fight plan and what, just not get away from it. Well, that's what is required against a guy with the kind of heart, determination, power of Mike Tyson. You've got to be consistent. Let's get the official decision now from Michael Buffer. Mike? Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes, 59 seconds of the seventh round. The winner... Still the undefeated, undisputed, heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson! All right, right now, Larry Merchant trying to make his way over to the champion, and I believe he is. Let's go to Larry right now with Mike Tyson. Larry? And I'm with Mike Tyson, who first administered a paint job and then sort of wrecked the whole house. Mike, 
he looked very impressive in the first round, looking like Ali, the way he moved and jabbed. What were your thoughts at that point, and then how did you attack him to stop that? Well, in my mind, I knew this was 15 rounds, and I was prepared to put the pressure on him constantly for 15 rounds. You know, I was having, I was having a great time in there. I felt good. I was in the best condition of my life, and I did what I was supposed to do. Well, tell me, what, what did you think in that first round when he was moving, trying to do an Ali no. with his left? I knew when I when I came in this fight, I was the best fighter in the world, and I'm a man alive that can beat me. What broke him down? Was it just Constantly the body punches? When I was I was hitting him with body punches, and I heard him actually he was crying in there, making woman gestures like oh 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 I can't How, find you, him, but I knew that he was breaking down soon. You're saying that Biggs was crying when yes, you hit him? Yes. When when did that happen? And perhaps the fourth round on. So that you knew you had him by that Absolutely, time. Absolutely, but I knew he was he was tough in there taking those punches. Was this your most satisfying fight in the sense of the way you went about it patiently and, and business-like, not getting excited, not trying to take him out with one punch? Well, I, I was very calm, and I, was, and I was thinking about Roberto Duran, how he used to cut down the runners and just wear them down, and I had that frame of mind when I was in the ring. All right, Mike, let's take a look at the first knockdown, and would you describe what was happening? Well, I was in there looking for the punch, boom, and I knew it would come, because when he threw a punch, his hand opened a little, and I thought I could slip a punch right in there. Were you trying to work on his cut early on because he was pretty bloody? No, I wasn't even thinking about the cut. I was just hitting to the body, softening him up. So that from then on, you really feel that it was inevitable after the first few Absolutely. rounds? Absolutely. All right, Mike, we hear now that you're going to fight Larry Holmes next. Why Larry Holmes? Well, I don't have any say-so in the matter. I'll just a fighter, and I'll defend my title against any man in the world. If I was you, I'd talk to Jim Jacobs about that. Do you want to fight Larry Holmes? I'll fight any man in the world, because I believe there's no one in this plan that can beat me. Okay, then let me ask Jimmy Jacobs, the co-manager of Mike, why do you want to fight Larry Holmes next? Well, the reason is that be uh, I would say that 90% of the world thought that Larry Holmes beat Michael Spinks the last time they fought. In fact, Larry, of 46 newspaper men polled after the fight, 42 men of the 46 voted for Larry Holmes in the last fight with Michael Spinks. Larry is sitting at home feeling that he's the champion, and that's the reason we're going to fight him. But he did lose his last two fights. He hasn't fought in a good long while. It's A lot of people are saying, what is this, some kind of an antique show? Or is this in the best or worst traditions of boxing, fighting these kinds of fights? I don't think it's e either in the worst or best traditions of boxing. Boxing history is replete with 27 heavyweight champions attempting to regain the title. However, this the champion we're talking about, Larry Holmes, uh, was defeated by a split decision in his last fight against Michael Spinks, where everyone, even you, Larry, everyone, including you, thought that Larry Holmes won the fight. Okay, then, then, then what about Michael Spinks? Uh, that is the most attractive fight out there, according to everyone, and you can jump in here too, Bill, Bill Caton. What about Michael Spinks, and, and why aren't you going to take him on next or right after next or whenever? Whenever we're ready to, we make our plans for that. We haven't made our plans to take on Michael Spinks because a fight with Michael Spinks which is a pay-per-view, closed-circuit fight, takes a minimum of five months, during which time Mike would not fight. Mike wants to fight more frequently. So you're saying now you will fight Michael Spinks eventually? I would say this, that Michael Spinks is definitely in our future. Definitely in our future, but not in our immediate future. Let me put it this way. If you, uh, you have been saying that you have a lot of fights planned, that you have told various people you're going to fight their man, what what about going in there and saying um, we'll fight you winner take all or winner take almost all? We'll give a million dollars to the loser and twenty million to the winner. Would you fight Spinks yes. under those circumstances? Under the circumstances, if he would take a million, on that, on that yes, deal? yes, or yes. or you take a yes. million, yes. Yes. yes, yes, we would we would fight Michael Spinks on the basis that the loser takes a million and the winner take the rest. Yes, we would do that. That's not, one way of making the deal. Yeah, that would be one way of making the deal quick. <laughs> you sound pretty confident. <laughs> And let's see what Barry and Ray think about that one. If he's going to do that shit, then All right, thanks very much, Larry Merchant and Mike Tyson. And here's a couple of special guests dropping through the camera shots here. And I'm with a guy who you just spoke about a little bit. No, he's not at home watching this one. He's right here watching this one. 
Larry Holmes, the former champion. And Larry, let me ask you first of all the obvious. Is there a deal for you to fight Mike Tyson? Yes, it's a deal. There are a few things that we have to work out yet, but it's a deal. You know, uh, I'm ready to go in there with Mike uh, sometime in January, whatever day they want. And hope it's going to be on HBO because I want the world to be able to see it. And out of this fight, I hope it's such thing as fairness. Last time I didn't get it and I complained about it, the world seen it. Now I hope once they see it once more, it's fairness. I'm going to knock this guy out. What did you see in here tonight? What did you see that you feel that you can do that Tyrell Biggs didn't? Well, first of all, I'm a, bot I'm a boxer. My jab is stronger. I got a good right hand and I can, I can hook it. Uh, one thing I've seen, uh, Tyson makes a lot of mistakes. And if he fights me dirty, that's what kind of fight it's going to be all night. Because I didn't see a class of fight. I didn't see a, a guy that with class in there tonight. I seen a guy that throws elbows. I seen a guy that throws butts. I seen a guy that hits after the bell. I seen all of this in Mike Tyson. I didn't see a gentleman in there. If they want to make him out of a beast that he's claimed to be, he's going to be in there with a beast. I'm an experienced, professional fighter. I am no kid. I do not play. So if he wants to fight any way he wants to fight, I am capable of fighting any way anybody wants to fight. Everybody says movement. That's the way to beat him. Everybody agrees that's the way to beat him. And yet I've seen four or five get, guys get in here and just not be able to do it, even though they know how to do it. Well, first of all, it's a different kind of a movement. It's a running kind like he was doing in the first round. He got out there, he ran. Not really running, using the jab. He was doing very well. And then when he tried to settle down, it was a little bit too late. What you do is take his momentum right, right away. You, you got to demand the respect. And you can't remand, demand respect if you don't have a good left hand. That's something that I got at 37, which soon will be 38 years old. And think about it, after this fight, people are saying, Larry Holmes, why? They won't say that anymore after this, because I know what I'm doing. Let me ask you, I, the obvious question is to ask you about the layoff, but I asked this guy behind me about the layoff, too, and he came back, and, of course, he beat marvelous Marvin Hagner. But what about Larry Holmes' layoff? Well, I tell you, sometimes the layoff is the best thing for you. As you know, I was fighting four or five times out of a 12-month period. Sometimes that wear and tear on your body, and sometimes you need a good rest. I think the rest probably helped me more uh, by not going to the gym every day, not getting up in the morning every day. I think that rest helped me pretty much. And now it made me, I got that desire again to go out there one more time to show the people who the real heavyweight champion is and give it back to the dogs. You might be the first grandfather to ever win the heavyweight championship. No doubt about it. If I didn't think I was going to win, Barry, I wouldn't even get in this ring. I don't need the money. HBO know I don't need the money. I'm very rich with what I have. And I'm happy, happily married. And I'm just going to keep on doing what I want to do. This fight came up. It's an opportunity. It's get back something that they took away from me. I mean, the world know it. Michael Spinks know it. And you know it. And HBO know it. And I got a chance now to do it one more time to get it back, and I'm going to take full advantage of it. All right, Larry, thank you, and we want to see that fight. Let me ask the man here. Don King has joined us here. Don, is there a name on a contract and a date for this fight? Is it going to happen, and if so, when? It's going to happen, uh, Barry, and it's going to happen in January. The new year will be brought in with a return to glory and giving Larry an opportunity to recapture the glory of yesteryear. When I went down to talk to him about fighting, he put on a 15-round exhibition and was a stupendous. A guy who did all of the tough things that you, a fighter has to do with the rigorous schedule, and he demonstrated to me by a no uncertain uh, indication that he's ready, and he's going to be in that ready to fight on, on uh, 20 January. And what happened, Don King told me it was only a 12-round fight, so I did three extra rounds with, when I didn't have to. Well, you look good. i got to say, you look good. Thanks to both of you, sir. But it's etched in stone. HBO, the network of champions, uh, HBO is, in is in for a treat, treat for Mike all Tyson of his viewers. is in for a treat. No, he's in for a surprise. He's in for a treat. Surprise. It's a shock. Right. We'll be back to the Bickersons shock right after this. In the meantime, let's get back up to Larry Merchant. Larry? Before this fight, Tyrell Biggs said of Mike Tyson that he reminded him of the powerful dinosaurs whose power couldn't keep them from becoming extinct. The problem is it took a couple of hundred million years for that happening to happen. And it takes about an hour for, for, to make Mike Tyson extinct, and nobody around looks like they can do it. There are a lot of potential opponents out there, but really the only guy that I know of who could do in Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson. To put it another way, why would you train as hard when you're rich and famous and pretty girls want to touch you as you did when you were poor and unknown and they all thought you were ugly? So as Linda Ellaby would say, and so it goes. Barry? All right, thanks very much, Ray Leonard.
Ray Leonard. That was Larry Merchant. This is Ray Leonard. I, all guys in tuxedos look alike. Ray, let me ask you first of all your impression of the fight. Personal feeling, that was as good as I've seen Mike Tyson look. Well, George Benton came over to me and said that, uh, well, a guy can't fight, referring to Mike Tyson. And I asked him, I said, what happened with the strategy of Tyrell Biggs? He said he's going to back to find out what was wrong with him. Mike Tyson fought an excellent fight, a magnificent fight. He worked the body, slowed his man down, and every opportunity, Barry, he saw, took advantage of it. The hands, the right hand down of uh, Biggs, the left hook came into play, the jab, the body shot. It was a great fight. Well, if Mike Tyson can't fight, I want to see the guy who can. I want to see the guy who can fight well enough to beat the guy who, quote, can't. Well, we'll remind you that the NFL comes back, and with the NFL coming back, so too does Inside the NFL, HBO Sports' popular series on the National Football League. will be on the air this Thursday with host Len Dawson and Nick Bonacani. And be sure to join us for our next telecast of World Championship Boxing as WBA lightweight champion Edwin Rosario defends his title against the WBC super featherweight champion Julio Cesar Chavez. That's Saturday, November 21st, right here on HBO. So for Larry Merchant and Sugar Ray Leonard, I'm Barry Tompkins saying so long from Atlantic City. The executive producer of HBO Sports and the producer of tonight's telecast is Ross Greenberg. The show was directed by Mark Payton. The feature producers are Rick Bernstein and Steve Salvatore. The associate producers, Michael J. Whalen and David Harmon. The assistant to the producer is Brian McDonald. And the production managers, Judy Dross and Russ Gabay. Presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions. The thriller in Manila. I'll never forget that fight with Muhammad Ali. It was our last fight, but it was HBO's first live fight. And they had a lot of great fights since. Sugar and spine I feel nice A sugar and spine HBO for 15 